this video is about my Skaven collection as it exists up to this point. I'm making this video before I begin painting in earnest, and I plan on buying some additional models to modernize and update the collection. I really wanted a before and after video in the hope that you'll see most of this force painted. So don't worry, in the coming weeks and months, you'll see plenty of videos that showcase the painted models, the rules for Skaven, and I plan on discussing my army lists. I have a lot of models and a lot of armies, but honestly, I have a sentimental attachment to these collections based upon fond memories and associations. In the early 2000s, I had a very large group of friends that played both Warhammer Fantasy and 40k, and a buddy of mine named Joe was among that group, and he was very passionate about painting, building lists, and playing games. But as we all know, life can pre present unexpected challenges, and he made the difficult decision to leave the hobby. So rather than sell his army on eBay, I bought them. So the core of my Skaven collection began around 2004-ish, and for many years it was mostly composed of his models. So truthfully, the few painted Skaven models I have were painted by Joe. And since I assumed ownership, I've really only played with the army a handful of times. But in the intervening years, I've kind of more passively added to the collection through things like the Island of Blood box set, Silver Tower, and more recently, Carrion Empire. Some of you have found out that I'm an organizational freak of sorts, and uh, <laughs> To keep large collections organized, I maintain detailed Excel spreadsheets for all of my AOS and 40k armies. And these keep track of the exact models I own, the number of models in each faction, the number of painted models, which is unfortunately often quite dismal, and their point values, in addition to any interesting notes. So my Skaven collection tallies at 298 models for a total of 4,980 points. And currently this is what I have. For the Master Clan, I have an old gray seer on a screaming bell, the classic metal model. And this you know, remains an essential feature in many Skaven lists. And I plan on putting this on a new base and seeing it in action. I also have a gray seer on foot. It's the standard model, and for a while, when I first was organizing this army, I wasn't really sure where this came from. And then I realized I bought the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower Arcane Heroes expansion, and that's where this was added. And then for Clan Verminous, I have a Claw Lord from the Island of Blood box set. I have the old Queek Headtaker model, who now is just a generic Claw Lord. Um, this is obviously when it was metal as opposed to fine cast. And I also have this little Claw Lord, again another metal model, which I actually really like this. Um, it just has a nice little touch that the pole with the severed dwarf head and is held aloft by his tail and has this kind of cool little weapon. And then from the Warhammer Underworlds um, game, I have also collected Scourge Spike Claws Swarm, which is a great assortment of different Skaven models with really just some kind of Esh Eshin and Verminous aesthetics combined. And I have 49 old clan rats of spears and 49 old clan lats with hand weapons. And these are old models from Warhammer Fantasy, and the odd number was so that I could actually add a character to the unit and maintain even ranks. And I also have 20 newer clan rats with spears, and 20 clan rats with hand weapons. These are both obtained from the Island of Blood box set. And then here are five of the old Skaven Slaves. Now, Skaven Slaves are obviously very popular, 
few people actually bought these specific models for them. These are metal. You needed vast quantities of these guys in earlier editions. You know, units of 30, 40, 60 even. Pretty common. Um, I don't know how many of these you got in a blister pack. Maybe three. So it'd be pretty pricey to do it this way. But I'm, I'm happy to actually have a few of these token models, even if they're kind of the utility of them isn't that great. But most people would just use regular clan rats to represent them. And then for clan molder, I have the old Throt the Unclean, which uh, in the current rules I'd probably use as a master molder. It's a little thin catcher. And I have five pack masters, one of which is also equipped with a thin catcher. And the pack master of the longer pole with that, kind of that warp crystal at the end, that's from the Island of Blood box set. And you know, honestly, the more I think about that box set, it's just like this collection of unique sculpts um, that unfortunately didn't go anywhere, um, but <laughs> kind of a, a unique box set for its time. And I also have two rat swarms. I have five rat ogres, two of which are from the regular rat ogre box set. Um, two others are from the Island of Blood which are just, you know, beautiful sculpts in comparison to, like, the, the generic ones. And then the fifth Rat Ogre is actually, I believe, from the Mordheim Warband. Um, again, this is from Joe, so I'm not sure if he... He must have had the War, Mordheim Warband, but uh, for whatever reason, this is the only model I have from it. And then finally, I have five giant rats. But... I also have this hefty bag of rats. Now initially, I was going to use these to make rat swarms. That was always my intention. But um, I was watching Warhammer Weekly and Vince was talking about this is a way to build regular giant rats. And I hadn't really even thought of that. Um, I had done some pricing out of what it would take to actually get, you know, two units of 40 rats with the... <laughs> five rats you get in the rat ogre box and yeah it's like five hundred dollars to do it that way so this is definitely the most cost effective ways to use these as rats and once i started putting them on bases i quickly realized that uh, you know they're some of them are actually the exact same size so it's not even that outlandish but in either case i separated the models that had the robed pes pestilent aesthetic and i still managed to build an additional 68 giant rats, which is great. So for Clan Eshin, I have two Death Masters. And these were formerly called Death Runners. Um, they were added to the collection when I bought the Silver Tower box set. One of the reasons I make the Excel sheet is because this way I know exactly what I have. And I had all my skaven out, I thought I had the entire collection before me, and then I looked on the Excel sheet, I saw these two models, and I was like, where are these things? But it makes sense that these assassins are hiding somewhere in my hobby room. I was eventually able to track them down. So there you go, handy little things. And then for Clan Pestilence, I have this old Plague Priest, equipped with a Plague Sensor. And then I have a unit. 20 plague monks armed with dual footed blades and the second unit of 20 plague monks with footed blades and a woe stave um and you know i just built those just to have some variety um for clan scryer i have a warlock bombardier this is from the carrying empire box set and i have an older warlock engineer which i still enjoy it's a it's a nice little sculpt um and I have the newer sculpt that uh, came with the Island of Blood as well. For Scryer weapon teams, I have two Rattling Guns, the now discontinued Poison Wind Mortar, and a Warp Fire Thrower. Both of those are also from the Island of Blood box set. And I have three measly Scryer Acolytes, the former Poison Wind Globideers. So to basically round off the whole collection, I have 
three Storm Fiends that I got from the Carrion Empire box set, and one has a Rattling Gun, one has a Warp Fire Projector, and the other with a Doom Fire Gauntlet and Warp Laced Armor. Basically, when I put these together, I just went purely with the rule of cool. And, uh, you know, the Carrion Empire box set um, really has helped me to flush out my Squire collection. So, I already had one Doom Meal, now I have two. And I had one old Warp Lightning Cannon. Now I have two. The older version is certainly much smaller and uh, has a much lower profile. It's very much the same symptoms as the old Screaming Bell. But I think it's still usable. I just plan on boosting it up somehow to, you know, raise it so it's on the same. It doesn't need to be quite that high, but, you know, reasonably higher. So that's it. Um, overall, I think I'm in a good position to push in any direction. You know, I can really go Molder or Scryer or Verminous or Pestilence. And honestly, so far the lists I've created for the various clans all roughly cost the same and involve the same amount of investment. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm really looking forward to obtaining some centerpiece models to you know, bring the whole force together some form of larger bell or sensor bearer or vermin lord is definitely in the works. Uh, those centerpiece models are really essential to bring the collection together. And so now I'm going to begin to paint. I've already started to prepare the collection for the required work. Most of them, these models have been rebased in recent days and I'm ready to get started. Um, overall, I'm excited to give this army some time and attention, and I'm looking forward to getting them on the table and playing some games. So, I'm going to finish this video, and I plan on starting painting pretty much immediately. Thanks for watching.